are a one double A division, and you are been here seven years, and you're you are allowed to be in the playoff system. But uh, since you're non scholarship one double A and not D three, uh, you probably feel like that's not a part of the plan in, in doing so. But we're glad to have you here. Thank uh, you. Seven years, you've won a bunch of games. How you doing? Well, I'm very well. It's Big nice ball game here. yesterday. Great game for our program yesterday. Homecoming. You got to win the homecoming game, you and bet. Uh, we got that one done against Evansville. Uh, it's a very much improved program from last year, and we were we were very uh, nervous going into the game because they were three and one. They'd only lost their game by by uh, two points at the last second, the last second field goal. So we knew they were going to be a good team, but our guys played real well. You are six wins away from a hundred as a football coach. Aspirations? Are you? Have you ever thought too much about? Uh, Stepping up? Are you? Have you gotten into that? I don't see your name around doing interviews. How do you feel about your future? Are you happy at Drake? And what's going on in your world? I I really love it at Drake, Jim. I I really like the the uh, program there. The support is terrific, and I think it's a good fit for me. I, I've always coached non-scholarship players. Okay. I was a non-scholarship athlete myself. I think the fit between a, a good academic student and a kid who really loves to play football is a good fit for me. So it's that's New a good conference. Place. Yeah. You fit in there nice. Has it helped with what you're just saying? Oh, yeah. Um, you are a non-scholarship uh, recruiter. Uh, you're not going to give aid. Getting into the conference, has that helped you since you've been to Drake? Has that been a big thing for you guys in stepping up that level? No question about it. That's been the key, and that's one of the reasons why we're really happy at, at Drake now, because the conference gives us something to shoot for. As you mentioned, we can't go to the playoffs. And so having a conference title now gives us something to play for that we didn't have before, because we weren't eligible for the Division Three playoffs right. when we were Division Three. We're really not going to make the 1AA playoffs more than likely, you know, right. because of the scholarship difference. Right. So this gives us something to shoot for. You and a great actually, schedule. let me interrupt you, and I'm it's just okay. not sure. You actually could be invited. It's just that it's so remote because people, they, they, they don't take a real strong view of letting you into the playoffs with a Northern Iowa and a, and a Marshall and a Youngstown State because you don't have a scholarship. It's kind of an unfair advantage, right? That's right. right. We're technically eligible. And, in fact, Dayton's getting some votes now in the 1AA rankings, right. you know. And, but I think from a strength of schedule standpoint, we don't play the 1AA schedule that other people do. And the scholarship differential would be huge. We play some Division II schools right. that have 40 scholarships. We hang on pretty carefully, you know, pretty closely with those guys. But going to 63 scholarships against zero would be tough. Okay. Dayton, uh, I know you got to get. We don't play them for a couple of weeks now. Come on. <laughs> well, I'm not a coach anymore. I, can't, uh, I don't can have do to worry that about now, that. Yeah. Um, are you, I know in the back of your mind it's got to be something that you'd love to do. Not, not, that's a stupid thing to say. I know you love to do that. It, it mean, what, how much would it mean to get through? Let's just assume that you can, not, without putting you on a spot. I know you got to play a tough ball game next week, but you want right. to move on. Is it a big deal? Oh, it's a huge deal. Honestly, it is, Jim, and, and it has been from the very beginning. You know, we've played them ever since I have been at Drake. They've beaten us every time. You got to get that monkey off your back. You've been in that. In that. The Rob Ash Show, featuring Drake University football, head football coach Rob Ash, and your host Mick Trier. Brought to you in part by Capital City Buick, Des Moines' new value leaders. And by Home Team Pizza, free, fast delivery. It's a hit. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Well, the Drake Bulldogs picked up another win last week, 23-6 over Evansville. Got a smiling head coach, Rob Ash here. And, Coach, you got to be pretty uh, excited about that win. Well, it was a great win, Nick. First of all, it's homecoming. You're supposed to win that homecoming game. And secondly, it was against Evansville, which is becoming kind of an arch rival of ours. And, and uh, also, it was just a good, satisfying win because everybody played well. So it was, it was a pretty good day. I know one of the things that, of course, we build up to be an exciting game was the quarterback situation. I think we expected a little more out of Fish on Saturday. Was it Fish or was it your defense? I thought Eric Fish played very well, Nick, against a very good defensive plan that our guys put together and that our players executed. Uh, we really didn't give him a chance to get hot because he couldn't throw the ball deep down the field. We played soft. We made him throw underneath. Uh, he did a good job, I think, of taking the open receivers, but it didn't get him very many yards. You know, after the ball game, of course, we were talking offensively, defensively, special teams. Everybody did a great job. 
Well, I think, Mick, right now I've got a, uh, as I look at our team now, it's the seventh year we've been here, at Drake, as a coaching staff, and our guys have been doing sa the same schemes now for several years, the same coaching staff. I feel like we've gotten to the point now where we're pretty solid in every aspect, and we're not necessarily the best in the league in anything, but we're very solid, and I think that's why we're being successful. Well, I think you're right, Coach. Well, we got some great highlights coming up, and including a couple of uh, trick plays that Coach uh, kind of grabbed out of the bag. We'll have them for you next. Quality. This was homecoming, but it was also the start of the Pioneer Football League. And, of course, you got to start on the right foot, and you did. That's right. We are in the conference race now. Every game means twice as much to our players. It was our home opener in the league. Uh, of course, we had the great win last week on the road at Butler. Uh, Evansville was opening up their conference season, so they were ready to try to get a road win. And our guys are really driven this year about trying to win the league, and they really played well, I think, better because it was a conference game than if it wasn't. Well, let's take a look at the highlights of this football game. It was a nice day. Great day to play. and uh, We had a good homecoming atmosphere. We had a great pep rally on campus uh, Friday night, which was the first one that I've uh, been involved in since I've been at Drake. Our guys were very excited about the game. There I was talking to Rob Hill, TV color guy, about some of the things we had in mind. And opening play of the game, we decided to start out throwing the ball and trying to loosen up uh, Evansville a little bit. Richie Hoskins makes a good grab. Roy Fletcher right away with the first uh, completion. And Jason Grove then uh, on about the second or third play of the game gets that first down for us. And then we stalled out a little bit and had to punt. But you can see we're already across the 50 because we got a first down. And then Matt Sneller, who has been injured and, and came back, just had a great day punting. Uh, that one went down uh, in the end zone, but the one after this uh, was caught at the 10. So he did a great job putting Evansville deep in their own territory for the start of the game. Now their first play of the game, uh, Fish tries to throw short. Tommy Becker said, uh-uh, he was right there. And Anthony Fuller came and knocked down the receiver. A real good way to start the game. So they tried their first running play. And we blew up the pulling guard. Anthony Fuller scraped and made the tackle. So their first two plays were very unsuccessful. They had a penalty. And uh, our defense did a great job. Look at all the blue shirts getting to the football. And uh, defense held them deep in their territory the uh, first two times. And we got the ball back. And then we broke loose here with a long pass to Rich Hoskins. We had run that play earlier. And, and we noticed that it might be open when Fletcher hit him deep. And then we ran uh, Charlie Schimberg, number 33 there, off tackle. And we get in a balanced formation here, and we, we ran him a second time, and this is the third time. Three plays in a row to Charlie. We just said the first time we got down there, we were going to see if they could stop our, our best play. And after three plays, we had a score, so we were happy about that. After we uh, got into the game now, they, what happened there, there's Kerman Mason making a good tackle. The whole first quarter ended up being that. They were deep in their territory. They had to throw short. We came up and made good tackles. So going into the second quarter action, we got ourselves in third and eight. There's a great completion from Fletcher to to uh, Charlie Henry, who's back from an injury and made a good catch in a third down uh, situation. Now we've got another third down. This is third and longer than that, about 12. And uh, coaches upstairs in the box noticed that Schimberg was open on one of our pass routes. We came back to it, converted there two third downs in a row. So now we're down in the uh, red zone again. A good running play by Schimberg. And uh, as you see, the yell like hell winners there from Friday night's pep rally. Uh, we're setting ourselves up for a uh, third and goal from the eight. If you look at the top of the screen, you'll see the combination route there and a touchdown pass from Fletcher to Chad Hying. Now we've got this on replay. Look at the top of the screen. You'll see Hying. He's the second guy from the top. Hoskins is the outside guy. He's going to run the slant inside. And so you've got a freshman, Chad Hying, against number three for Evansville, who's all-conference uh, defensive back, James Duncan. But James Duncan plays inside in this situation and gives up the outside. And we worked on that play a lot in practice. It was, you can see it was a perfect pass, good concentration by Chad, and he made the reception. Then after that score, we had noticed that they weren't sound against the fakes. And so we faked the PAT and uh, threw the pass there. Hoskins is the holder. He threw the pass to Charlie Henry. So it made it 15 to nothing instead of 14 to nothing. I think that shocked Evansville a little bit. They still came back with this uh, passing game where they were running the guy deep. And then they had, we came up and tackled them. Then they tried the draw play, and Jeremy Fisher, along with lots of other guys, come up and make a stop. But I think the 15 nothing relaxed us a little bit. They got a couple first downs, and then uh, defense rose to the occasion again with Kerman Mason making a good break up there. A couple running plays just to show you. They started packing a lot of people in there with Schimberg behind great blocking. The offensive line did a super job. And here's Grove running back, cutting back, getting some extra yards. Uh, so we still were able to power the ball out, but we couldn't quite get the first down, so we had to get it with a little trickery. There's the other one of the trick plays you mentioned. John Kunster and Ben Wolford uh, teaming up. Ben throwing the ball, John catching the ball. That's the second time this year that that punt fake has worked. That got us down deep, and then we had a bad break. The ball 
bounced off the receiver's hands. They caught it. Uh, we noticed on the replay here in the studio that that ball hit the ground before it was caught, but the officials didn't have the benefit of all the slow motion replay, so they gave the ball to Evansville with about a minute left, well, two minutes probably left in the half, and Evansville broke out of there with a good draw play, a couple other completions, and here's a key sequence in the game. Uh, they run a nice fade route there, and I think their receiver looked up into the sun and couldn't see the ball. Key play, because that was about 30 seconds left in the half, and the play, very next play, Fish throws an interception to our Fisher, and uh, he ends up returning it. So we got out of the half 15-0, although it could have been very easily 15-7. Big turnaround. More exciting highlights coming up in the second half, but first we need to show you some of our fine sponsors. Coach, going into the second half, I felt like many games, it's been a Drake football first half. We really did a good job in the first half. Uh, very important that we got out of that half the way we did. Uh, we talked to our team about being fortunate that we didn't get the score against us at the end of the half, and our, our defense started out great. Lights out, good coverage on the kickoff. Anthony Fuller, Matt Garvis there on, on Evansville's first running play of the second half. And then uh, this is still their first series of the second half. Great play here by Brian Peck, number 90, and Brian Andrews, number 95. Two guys that are seniors, played behind upperclassmen, you know, all through their careers. They're now getting a chance to start, and they made the tackles there. And we were off to a great start. Charlie Schimberg running over Duncan. Uh, really good hole up front for him by the offensive line. And then we had a couple penalties that set us back. So on third and 30, we just took a shot at it and threw the ball down to Berkeley and made it. Uh, unfortunately, we missed a field goal there by just inches, and uh, so, so we kind of blew that good start to the second half, and we ended up still being 15-0 where it could have been more. Uh, Evansville comes back here with a little bootleg, and the, there was a good hit right off the edge of the screen there, Tommy Becker on the intended receiver, and they try it again. They, don't, they can't throw it deep. They throw it short. Tommy Becker comes up again making a tackle. Really good aggressive play by our football team. Uh, then our only real miscue of the game here, I put this on because it shows you that Evansville got their, their score in the game as a result of our mis, you know, mishandling this punt. We pride ourselves on our special teams, uh, but our defense made them work for it. They, uh, they tried to run the football there and about seven or eight guys made tackles. They completed a third down pass and then they tried to run it again and Jim Scarless, 74, uh, stopped him. But then on third down, if you watch the top of the screen coming into the middle, they put a receiver in there in, the, in a hole in the coverage and, and hit the, the uh, a touchdown pass and so that made it 15-6. They went for two and missed because we had made the two-point conversion so we still had a nine-point lead. And then Cortez Hall number 20 really got us uh, fired up again after that low point with a good return, got us going and then we had a, a we missed on a play so we came up to about third and eight. We tried to screen pass out here to Jason Grove number 34. An uh -huh. excellent run getting the first down and we've got this one on replay for you. If you watch the two receivers at the bottom are going to be blocking uh, Matt Jones, our, our tackle here on the right, is going to chop down the, the uh, outside rusher, so that makes a clear path for Grove. And then watch as Grove comes out here with the ball, you see there's an unblocked Evansville guy, and Jason makes him miss. That's what a good back has to do. And then he comes up in here, and here's James Duncan, their best defensive player, and, and uh, he's got Grove dead to rights, and Jason makes him miss too. Two missed tackles in a row, and, and uh, then this number 31 for uh, uh, Evansville, that's Wolfhook. He did a great job. Watch, he hangs on, but he grabbed uh, Jason back there at that other stripe. Jason's gone three yards. Now he's going to go four, five, six yards here, pulling the <laughs> defender along. And of course, uh, at that pace, the reinforcements are going to come. But look how many yards. We, we evaluate running backs on two things, uh, making guys miss and getting yards after contact. And that run right there shows you both of those things on the part of uh, Grove. And good blocking to set it up. We got ourselves at the start of the fourth quarter in another third down situation, third and eight, and Grove uh, converts that one for the first down. And then here's the play that kind of iced it on an offensive side. Uh, Grove starting on the sweep, good blocks out front by uh, Garrett LaFleur, by Charlie Henry, by uh, Felix Gallagher, Jeff Portman, Matt Jones, uh, Nate Schneider, the offensive line, and A.J. Mum hustling to help on from the backside. Robbie Berkeley in there, the touchdown, and then another two-point conversion to uh, Ed Jennings. That gave us a 17-point lead really made it tough for Evansville to come back because they needed, they needed three scores. The rest of the fourth quarter was just all defense as Evansville tried to catch up. Everybody was covered, so Fish had to run there. They tried the draw play, but our guys closed on them really fast. Book and Garvis making plays. And now if you look at the uh, top of the screen, I think this is a play. Now we got another one here. John Kunster first, knocking the ball down. Real good play by 41. 
uh, making a play. And here's another running play they tried. Uh, Kunster stringing it out, Darren Books there. Uh, great job by the defense all day. Now here's a play I think I was going to try to, to show you at the top of the screen. See how they tackle our uh, defensive end. So they resorted to even that. That got flagged and then Kunster almost intercepted it. It got pretty one-sided at the end. Our defense did a tremendous job shutting them down. Indeed they did and uh, not to single out any player coach but uh, at one point it looked like the Jason Grove highlight film there <laughs> for a minute on there. Well Jason had some good runs but you know you can't do that totally by yourself. Our offensive line whose names I mentioned on his touchdown they did a really good job and you got to get a good back through that first line to, to let him have a chance to make anybody miss and I don't want to slight Schimberg or any of the other running backs because uh, uh, Charlie runs those inside plays that are tough to do too. We've got a balanced team right now, Mick. We're not a one-person team. We've got a lot of weapons on offense, very solid defense and kicking game, and that's why we're doing well. I'll come back to it again. It seems like the Bulldogs right now are taking other teams out of their game plan immediately. From the start of the ball game, Drake takes them out of their game plan. I think our, our players have uh, learned a lesson going back to the beginning of the season against Wisconsin Lacrosse where we played a really good team, but we kind of went into the game kind of feeling them out and we've decided we're just going to start out and play our style at the beginning. We script all of our first plays on offense. Our defense knows what they want to do. And I think you're right. We've done a good job getting started in big games. Well, let's take a look at the uh, statistics of this football game. Kind of interesting, time of possession, but look at the total yards. Yeah, the time of possession at the bottom there wasn't as uh, one-sided as we hoped it would be with our running game against their passing game. But the total yards were excellent, 409 to only 161. And those defensive statistics are phenomenal when you look at how good Evan uh, was coming into the football game only 28 yards rushing uh, you're not going to win if you can't run the football but the even more spectacular 133 yards passing on 18 completions means that every one of Fish's completions was a short one. Well we're into the conference season let's take a look at the league standings. Hey you finally got up to the hey. top. It took us all year because sure Dayton had that 1-0 early but uh, you know they're obviously uh, still a great team they're 5-0 for the season. Uh, what's interesting to me is that all the other conference teams have a loss already. That's really important for us as we look down the road to make sure that we keep our destiny in our own hands, and that's certainly where we are right now. And Valparaiso is a team coming up. We've got to concentrate on them. All righty, Coach. When we come back, we'll have the play of the game right after this. You don't have to show. Well, there was a bunch of great offensive plays on Saturday, but the coach has selected one as our Capital City Buick play of the game. This week's play of the week was a touchdown at the start of the fourth quarter by Jason Grove that took us from a 15 to 6 lead to a 23 to 6 lead and pretty much put the game out of reach. This play is a great example of a good offensive play because it shows that when everybody on the team gets their assignment right, uh, that's when the big play happens. And so we're going to take you through step by step. It's a sweep to the right basically and at the beginning of the play you can see Charlie Henry and Jeff Portman here making their blocks at the point of attack. Jason Grove is going to get the handoff and then Charlie Schimberg 33 and Garrett LaFleur, 73, are going to block their men out. Grove has to read those blocks, and so he sees the blocks going out and cuts back. By speed, he beats one backside defender. Nate Schneider really hustles from the center position to make a block. Here's Charlie Henry continuing to block on his man. Out at the top, Rob Berkeley has his guy blocked. This is the one unblocked defender, the safety, which uh, uh, is, he makes him miss. And then uh, Jeff Portman finishes his a block, co continuing from the beginning of the play. Felix Gallagher down here, he's getting up because he put his man on his back at the beginning of the play. And then clear at the bottom as Grove breaks into the free, you'll see A.J. Mum hustling from the backside, getting in the way of number 24. So everybody on the football team made the play. Grove was able to break into the, into the open by reading the blocks the right way and finding the open seam. Great team effort, key play at a big time. Next up is our home team pizza play interview. After the ball game, I had an opportunity to talk with defensive back Tom Becker. Congratulations to Tom Ecker, our player of the game, and Tom, a tough, tough game for you today. You knew that it was going to be tough with an outstanding quarterback from Evansville, a fish, but uh, you did a nice job. Yeah, we knew Fish would uh, present a big challenge to us. He's a good quarterback. We've seen him last three years, and uh, we just had a lot of good pressure from the D, good team defense, and we thought we contained him pretty well. Was the game plan uh, to let him go a couple of yards and on the uh, hook patterns and the out patterns? It seemed like that Evansville was successful at times doing that, but you weren't going to give him the long one. Yeah, our goal was to... Uh, Check, make them check down the short passes. We wanted to take the deep balls away first and then break up quick on the little slant and hook patterns. And uh, we made some adjustments at halftime to, to come up on those short ones. But yeah, our goal is to shut down the long pass first. Bulldogs certainly own the series here with Evansville, but this is a team that's coming along pretty good. Yeah, we knew they'd be a tough team. The conference is pretty balanced and uh, 
Evansville always plays this tough, kind of big rivalry for us. We knew we'd go four quarters, and that's what it took today. Well, congratulations to the uh, Drake Bulldogs here with a nice win. And defensively, the Bulldogs are really coming on. Got some pressure on the quarterback. Still causing those guys to make those short uh, short setups for the quarterback there. Quick sets, and it's making tough on you guys. Yeah, our front seven's doing a great job and uh, putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback, and it makes our job a lot easier when he's got to scramble and, you know, Guys got to come out of the coverages, and our front seven's just doing a great job. I'll tell you what, you're one of the harder hitters out there. Uh, I'll tell you what, you really nailed a couple of guys. Well, I, we had, to, I had a couple of good breaks on the ball, and it just worked out pretty well. Tom from Dowling, of course, get to play in front of a good crowd here at Drake Stadium. It continues. That's kind of nice to play here in Des Moines. Yeah, it was nice to have uh, the fan support. It was a nice day. A lot of students came out, and it was homecoming. And it's nice to play in front of my family here in Des Moines and got a lot of local friends and family who get to come to a lot of the games. Why don't you tell us, too, for the folks that don't know, what you're uh, majoring in in college and how you're doing? Uh, political science major and come along well. Should graduate in May. Good job. I Also, Tom should mention, of course, the Bulldogs now off on the road and, of course, doing a nice job. You're in the hunt for this Pioneer Football League. What do you think? Yeah, we got a game next week at Valparaiso, and right now that's really all we're thinking about, taking it one game at a time. And uh, we know we control our own destiny, so we just got to go down to Valparaiso get them it'll be a tough game but uh we get that victory and you know, hopefully it'll set up something else well congratulations to uh, tom becker our player of the game well coach i'll tell you what a tough tough player one that uh, certainly can ignite some things out there he really does he was really inspired for this game i think he was looking forward to it as a defensive back playing against the passing game while we were talking about tommy though too he had a great honor uh, a couple weeks ago he was named the winner of the jerry hallett award at drake which goes to the best athlete in the whole school and he was tied for that honor with Trish Wakeley from the women's basketball team. But that's a great tribute to Tommy and our football program. We're real proud of him. And the nice thing is Tommy is from Des Moines here locally. A lot of the folks, go, of course, get to see him play. This defense is really coming on, though. Well, Tommy's just one of many good players on that unit. Kerman Mason is uh, another outstanding corner. Our whole secondary is playing real well. And those young defensive linemen that we were concerned about have played extremely well. Linebackers, you know, it's a good, solid unit now all the way around. We're not trying to single out any one player as we do these things, but it's kind of nice to get to know them a little better one at a time. And one of the things that on uh, Saturday, of course, we saw that Tommy was giving them five or uh, three or four yards. You didn't mind giving them that, just not the long ones. Well, it's a sign of experience, Mick. Both Kerman and, and Tommy and our safeties, too, were able to do the, you know, the, the game plan. They didn't, get, uh, they didn't get anxious about letting the ball be completed in front of them. Well, we'll take a break, and we'll be back to talk about the next opponent for the Drake Bulldogs right after this. It's apparent when you come back. Well, Coach, next up for the Drake Bulldogs on the road. Got to go to Valparaiso, a team that you are 2-0 in the series with. That's right, Nick. They're a member of our league, of course, and we started playing them when the league started two years ago. The first game against them out there was in a rainstorm, and I think they were favored, but we played really well on special teams, had two special teams touchdowns and beat them. Last year, uh, you got some highlights from this game. Uh, they came out and did a great job early against us. Ozzy Young, number 23, is still on their team. As you can see, he's a really good player. He's one of the top return men and halfbacks in the league. Uh, as that game went along last year, though, we did a better job of adjusting to his speed and getting him stopped. Uh, Valparaiso also runs some option. Uh, they've got uh, Nick Browder at quarterback. This isn't him right here. He came in later in the game. He was kind of injured last year, which helped us to a certain extent. But we got good pressure on him in, the, in that game. Got a sack here uh, by Todd Lee from last year's team and Todd Sauer and did a pretty nice job. So, there's, so we're going to cut out of these highlights now, but there were some, uh, some good defensive plays. We ended up holding them to just three points in the game and they came in with a high scoring average so our defense helped us to the 2-0. and Of course that was last year and this is this year yeah. and this year I'll tell you what I'm not so sure if you got pressure on your defense to hold them all the scoring they're doing or if you got to put pressure on your offense to do more scoring which is it? Well it's going to be a mixture I think uh, Nick because they they're an average score right now of Valparaiso this year something like you know 40 to 30 that's kind of how their games are going I, I think they're scoring really well they've got great offensive weapons and we've got to make sure we go in the idea uh, offensively that we're going to have to put some points on the board and not just rely on our defense to shut them out. Talking about weapons right now, the Bulldogs getting people have healthy, and you've got a lot of bullets right now. We don't have anybody necessarily that's a fabulous best player in the league, but on offense, we've got a lot of different people that you have to stop. Our defense is sound. Our kicking game's been good. I feel pretty good about going on the road for a conference game. But you're, but you're in the driver's seat, right? Well, we're controlling our own destiny. That's the key, and, and we hopefully we can keep that going. Coach, good luck to you on the road, and hopefully uh, you Thank bring you. back a win. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Rob Bay Show, and we'll see you back here next week.